Stability AI has slowly been giving us hints at what their unreleased Stable Diffusion 3 model might be capable of. We now have the research paper, which gave us some concrete numbers as to how it stacks up against other generative AI models. And what's interesting is a mod is pushing that text-to-3D and text-to-video will be some of the most impressive attributes of Stable Diffusion 3. Just based on the text-to-image capability, I don't think he's wrong. The other interesting thing that I wonder about is why Stability AI and Ahmad have been so careful and so secretive to share details about video and 3D in Stable Diffusion 3. He's been pretty open about it on Twitter, at least when he's openly said that he thinks the current version of Stable Video is actually just as good as Sora, and also that the 3D capabilities of Stable Diffusion 3 are also quite good. And when I was digging through Twitter the other day, I realized that I actually missed Kind of a quiet release that Stability AI made actually a few minutes before they released their research paper. I think this has a lot to do with the upcoming release. What's also kind of interesting is last night some really incredible news dropped that Mid Journey had actually gone down because so many developers at Stability AI had been dumping images and prompts out of Mid Journey, in theory to use it to train um, further a Stable Diffusion 3 and some of the 3D attributes we're seeing. And ironically, Mid Journey has now actually banned most of the Stability AI staff from using Mid Journey. But we'll get into that just a bit later. So I want to get into what this tool that Stability AI released quietly is, who they collaborated with to do it, and what it means for this future release of Stable Diffusion 3. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So this tool that was released by Stability AI is called Tripo SR. They built it in collaboration with Tripo AI, which is a separate entity that is actually uh, sponsored by Vast AI. So if you'd like to rent a GPU at an incredibly low price, check out our link below. And a Tripo SR is basically a new image to 3D model, not a text to 3D model. Although you can actually input text and it'll still give you something. So the idea here is you use uh, text to image in Stable Diffusion 3 or Stable Diffusion. And instead of doing image to image, now you can do image to 3D in one single step with Tripo SR. And as Stability AI describes this, they say it's a model capable of creating high quality outputs in less than a second. So it's really, really fast. And what's cool is people are already building with this. People are already building games with this. They're already building interesting Apple Vision Pro apps, which even if you think the Apple Vision Pro is kind of cringe, it's cool to see a tool released by a company like this, open source, so that people can just start building with it. Because obviously no one's building with OpenAI Sora now because it's not even released. And obviously since it's OpenAI, it's actually closed AI. So what is Tripo AI? So Tripo AI is an independent company and their specific focus is 3D and AI. And Tripo is one of their biggest releases so far. I'm not really sure what exactly Stability AI shared. Likely it was just compute because the other thing Ahmad can't seem to say enough on Twitter is how many A100s Stability AI has access to from Jeff Bezos. But Tripo has been working on some really curious things in the past as well. Again, most of it is 3D. So the funny thing is they built an AI tool that can take an image, uh, turn it into an object, and then render it in Minecraft, which was kind of interesting. And they've worked on a few other kind of interesting uh, technical demos, but this is by far the most polished thing they've released. So why does Tripo or why does image to 3D or text to 3D matter when it comes to creating incredibly realistic looking videos? If you watch videos from OpenAI Sora enough, you'll start to realize that there are really similar artifacts to what you see when you're watching animated nerfs. The kind that you would see from Nerf Studio or a number of these companies that have apps for the iPhone where you can walk around with a video and then capture a space. So the reason is that couple with a little bit of uh, kind of a basic physics engine, generative AI as well, gives you a much more immersive experience in comparison to uh, things we've seen before, like from Block A Labs, where you're using a diffusion model or a generative diffusion model to create an image, stretch it across a skybox, and then um, kind of call that an immersive experience, where you know, your eye is kind of tricked by perspective, but the issue is it's not truly kind of a, a 3D immersive experience. And when you're rendering it to video, that kind of thing counts. And it counts with, you know, trees and leaves or particles in the air. And this is why Sora looks so incredibly real. And although we haven't actually seen in a release from OpenAI explaining exactly how Sora works, a lot of very smart people have said, yes, like nerfs are obviously an attribute of this. And I think this is clearly why 
Stability AI wants to bake this into the video features of Stable Diffusion 3. So what does Stability AI have to say about Trepo SR? So basically their whole thing here is that it's a fast 3D object generation from single images. What they're most proud about is again, this partnership with Trepo AI in generating high quality 3D models from a single image in under a second. And the key here is high quality 3D models. If you've done stuff with NERFs before, you'll know that the output you get looks good, but then once you go to use it with something or actually use it in like Maya or another program, there's a lot of work that has to go into it to actually make it usable and actually make sure all the vertices are connected, that kind of thing. Most of what I think they borrowed from Trepo here was just a better automated way of generating 3D objects that are clean and actually usable. And what's also cool and what really fits with the ethos of Stability AI going forward is Trepo SR runs on incredibly low inference budgets. It can actually run even without a GPU, which is incredible. This makes it, again, more accessible and practical for a wide range of users and applications. And I think this is probably the biggest overlap they had with Stability, because obviously Stability AI builds great tooling, but if something already exists, you know, why not give them some compute hours in exchange for some of their IP? And what's also cool is as a result, this is entirely open source. It's licensed with the MIT license, which actually allows commercial personal and research use, which is pretty cool. Something that even Cloud3 uh, can't be used for technically yet. This model is incredibly cool. So they show here kind of some more example input images and the outputs that you get. They're incredibly cohesive. And I reviewed a few of these models basically six months ago. And the cohesion we get now is absolutely incredible. Not in just in terms of mapping the colors onto an object, but um, getting these incredibly complex objects that are very clearly occluded, like especially this plant here, and then getting something we can use right out of the bat. Obviously performance, again, is a big motive here. They say Trepo SR can create detailed 3D models in a fraction of the time of other models. When tested on an NVIDIA A100, it generates draft quality 3D outputs, including textured me meshes, in around half a second, outperforming other open image to 3D models such as OpenLRM. In addition to speed, our model is fully accessible to users with or without GPUs, which is again, a big deal for stability AI. So the performance is incredible. The quality is also very, very impressive. And what I mean with kind of the artifacts you see from NERFs, it's these kind of partially constructed bits that are not really cohesive. And it used to be that the idea was that you would add more kind of convolutional steps to infer this stuff. And what's cool is clearly Trepo is better because if you, if you need extra steps to actually fill in gaps, the thing is, is that takes more compute and you generally need more RAM or just a bigger GPU to make that happen. They've also open sourced the training data that was used for this, and they also have their own research paper that goes along with it, which um, I'll link to this blog post and you guys can check out if you're interested in looking at that. So this is the Vision Pro demo I was talking about. I think it's cool here because you can see um, a mixture of image to image flows being used to make this happen. So initially, there's kind of a rough image being created in one of these cool kind of sketch to image inference tools. Then it's dropped into Trepo to make it into a 3D object. And then it's immediately placed into this cool kind of AR VR space. In this case, it's kind of this, this moon rover. And this is why open source is so incredible. It's a tool you can use right off the bat and people who want to build can use it right away and not worry about kind of legal implications or whose IP it is. Obviously, you still have to give credit where credit is due, but this kind of progress as a developer is what excites me the most. And in terms of building, what's crazy is there are also entire game demos that have been completely built with Stability AI tools. So this one was made with Trepo SR. The hat pictures were made with SDXL. The 3D models obviously were made with Trepo. The bots were you created with some other open source uh, LLMs and What's crazy is right now, these tools enable solo developers to make incredible things incredibly fast. And that's why open source is such a big deal. And it's why we're seeing the tide change with really big tech companies like Meta and Microsoft from releasing huge closed models to more open tools that people can hack on and actually build on top of. So now I want to talk about what happened in terms of sort of the kerfluffle that Stability and Midjourney had in terms of accusations that Stability AI employees were using this data to help train their next model, Stable Diffusion 3. So in now deleted tweets from Nick St. Pierre, basically uh, someone spilled the beans in the mid-journey office hours, and they said that someone at Stability AI was trying to grab all the prompt and image pairs in the middle of the night on Saturday and brought down the entire service. And they also spilled that Midjourney is now banning all of the Stability AI employees from Midjourney immediately 
This was breaking last night, and from my understanding, this is an accurate story. Uh, I have someone who has a recording of the office hours, and it's pretty funny that someone actually let this one go. And they actually addressed this because the outage was very real. They said that in their official outage response that uh, there was a 24 outage on Saturday that occurred due to botnet-like activity from paid accounts. They, in clear writing, said they suspected these to be Stability AI employees trying to grab prompt and image pairs. They made the decision to ban all Stability AI employees from Midjourney indefinitely. And they've also added a new policy that says aggressive automation or taking down the service results in banning all employees of the responsible company. So basically, there were a small number of accounts that they linked to the Stability AI data team. How they did that, I don't really know. Uh, back in the day, I actually carefully wrote a Discord bot to actually do this. And ironically, there are still massive Kaggle data sets that were actually built the same way. Uh, and I will say that Discord has deliberately made it hard to create bots like this. But uh, when you're dealing with developers that are as capable as the ones at Stability AI, it's not really that surprising. So again, uh, these have now been completely wiped off of Twitter. But it's curious to see this kind of engagement happen in completely just in the public. Uh, now they've actually changed the announcement, uh, removing saying that like Midjourney has explicitly banned all Stability AI people uh, from accessing their service. But the, I mean, obviously, Midjourney probably sees Stable Diffusion 3 as a pretty big uh, competitor. I canceled my Midjourney account a while ago just because I wasn't really using it that much. And yeah, I mean, Stable Diffusion 3 is free and will run on most computers. And, you know, don't forget that also Stability AI also runs their own version of kind of Midjourney in a hosted service people can pay for. So this kind of competition is nothing new, and I think a lot of this is here to stay, especially the pursuit to kind of procure data and uh, novel training points from other companies. So do you think that we're actually going to see a lot of this image to 3D tech technology being used in Stable Diffusion 3? Which Stable Diffusion 3 features are you most excited about? Please tell me all about it in the comments. And as always, I hope you guys learned something. Um, please like, subscribe, and share if you like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.